All right, guys, I'm gonna be mixing it up today. I'm gonna to be coming at you with five quick reviews in less than 10 minutes. Can I do it? Maybe. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel and making it the best it can be. Hey guys, before we get into the review, you know, thank you for checking out my video. Welcome and welcome back to all my uh, my current subscribers. I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm just trying to, you know, really catch up on some of the books I've been uh, been reading. I did hit my 2022 reading goal, so I'm pretty excited about that. And these are just some books that I probably don't want to be doing a, a much longer review for them. I just want to give you a quick, spoiler-free things I liked, things I didn't like. And kind of give you my overall thoughts whether you should pick it up and it might be a good book for you so this is going to be a pretty like range of books here i'm going to give you my personal rating my score and uh some vary from all the way up to like <laughs> three beard seal of approval down to like uh f that book so uh let's get into it without further ado i'm going to be reviewing these in the order that i read them and so two of them are actually patron picks um, as you guys know i have a patreon if you're interested in becoming a patron uh, you know, you're not obliged to, but it's, it really helps and it helps me help support the channel. And also, you know, the higher levels, you get some merch and you get to pick a book for me to read. So all two of these books were picked by patrons and I read them. Some I enjoyed, some not so much. So let's get into the first review. So that book is Mechanical Failure by Joe Zasia. I hope I'm saying that right. It's the first book in the Epic Failure trilogy. So... <laughs> This one was interesting, so let's let's talk about the goods. First good, it's a very quick read. Um, it really kind of clips along at a good pace, and there's some actually quite interesting characters that you meet. So the main character, uh, R. Wilson Rogers, he is kind of, uh, a, you know, ex-military, but he kind of gets forced back into the military because of the situation he finds himself in at the beginning of the book. It's actually quite funny, so if you like comedic, uh, you know, kind of sci-fi, maybe not Douglas Adams style, but if you like some funny writing and some humor in there, a little bit of slapstick, uh, this is a really good book. It's it's so fast. Um, there's a really cool character you meet in the second half of the book, and uh, yeah, I like that. So let's get on to some of the cons. So some of the negatives for me was that not all the comedy hit. I don't think it really, I think it landed half the time, or sometimes I chuckled and the other time I'm like, okay, that's kind of dumb. That's not as, as funny. Uh, and then also the main character, you know, the main character, he, I don't really feel connected to R. Wilson. I just thought he was okay. He uh, he wasn't really super inspiring. I wasn't really rooting for him. He was just kind of going through the motions and he kind of fumbled his way through. There was another character you meet later on that I really liked. And I won't, get, you know, spoil that character, but I'm gonna end up giving this one a uh, C tier can safely buy on ebook. All right, so moving on, the next book I read was Full Moon by Jim Butcher. So this is the second book in the Dresden Files. You know, you're back with Harry Dresden. It's a few months after the events of the first book. He's still kind of reeling from that and he's it's affected his relationships with the police force. And so this one, Full Moon, you can probably tell uh, what might be the baddie in this book, you know, with typical Dresden, it's your creature of the week. I was really excited to jump back into this one. I did the audiobook version, actually, and that's one thing I want to say is great. The audiobook is great. It really pulled me through the story. A lot of people have said that this is a weaker book in the Dresden series. I can see why they consider it weaker. Um, there is a lot of, I'll talk about it in the negative, but I actually really like this story. I really enjoyed the pacing. I really enjoyed you know who the bad guy is there's actually different multiple types and you learn all about them and it's harry being very charismatic and i really actually dug it i actually really liked the story and i thought it was done extremely well um and let's you know that's really it. it's harry dresden you know up against another monster using his wits using his companions his bob to help him defeat the monsters and he's also joined by a human crew that you like so some of the negatives, and this is a negative that kind of just, just crop up a lot, where is there's a, it's kind of overly sexualized. Sometimes there's a lot of nudity in this book, and you know female characters are described as very sexual in this book, and it could just it, by a certain point you, you're just kind of over. You're like yes, 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 they're very attractive women and they're naked. Blah blah blah. Thank you, Harry. Uh, you know, let's move over it. So I think that's one of the biggest hiccups for some readers is that. It really kind of sticks on the nudity, sticks on the, the you know, sexual graphicness of some of these female characters and he hypersexualizes them. And, you know, Harry Dresden is still kind of a chauvinist pig in this book. Uh, again, like, 
it's just, I think it's just more, you know, as Jim Butcher evolves as a writer, this is again, this is the second book in a, a series that's up to 19 books now. So it's, it's obviously changed since then. So Full Moon, I'm actually giving this one a bookshelf. So let's get to the next one. Okay, so the next book I read was The Bladed Faith by David Dalglish. This was an arc I was given by NetGalley. And honestly, honest review for this, I love this book. This book was fantastic. I really liked the this the whole atmosphere you're in. You know, you're 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 met with this younger character, Cyrus. He's a prince of this country of Thanet, and the Th and Thanet is being invaded by the Everlorn Empire. And they, you know, killed his gods, they've killed his family, and now he's out on a quest for revenge to, you know, regain his crown, regain his people in reinstate his gods and it's actually fantastic i felt the the main character really had he really earned his um you know his reputation he really it wasn't like a mary sue type of character you see the struggles that cyrus goes through and that he has some great companion characters um you know in the in the supporting cast there's two other pov characters with actually three other povs but two of them alongside cyrus i really got attached to they really built Cyrus up as a character, and I really enjoyed this book. Um, great world building, great character building. Um, you know, there is some good combat, and that's one of the negatives I'm going to turn it into, is the com the combat can be overdone a little bit too, where I found, like, I was kind of, um, you know, getting a little bored sometimes with the combat, where it's quite graphic. Some of the fight scenes don't do go on for a little bit longer than they probably need to. And there are some graphic descriptions of injuries that happen to some people. So that is kind of one of the negatives. If you don't like big, bloody, gory battles, this might not be the book for you. But I really enjoyed it. I just, I love the world building. I love the characters. I love the setup. And the setup for the second book is absolutely great. He just perfectly transitioned it to the second book. And I cannot wait to read it. So this one, this was a tough rating because I really wanted to give it that S tier. Um... But with some of the little things I said, I kind of brought it down to three beers seal of approval, but it's probably top of there. So let's keep going. And uh, this is the last book that was a patron pick, and that, that was Lonnie by Max Porter. Woof. Okay, so this is gonna be hard to to say some of the good things for. So for the good things, the good thing is it's a really quick read. I read this in about two and a half hours. It's super like short. It can really pull you through the story. And kind of when I was reading it, though, I was kind of hooked on just, I kind of needed to know what happened and just got to the end of it. But I didn't enjoy my time with it. It's really artsy. And it's it's really, I don't know if people are actually going to like it for the story, just because of the art aspect of it. I really respect what Max Porter did in terms of the stylism of this book and what he was trying to achieve. It just didn't work for me. Um, I think it's one of those things where, People don't actually, I don't think they like truly love the book. They like it because it's artsy and they're, you know, people who are, you know, kind of stick their nose up and say, oh, it's so above your stature that you'll not get it. And they're like, oh, well, I better like it because it's so artsy. And I think a lot of people like it for that fact. And it just, it just was, it's a big miss for me. So there's, this book is broken down into three parts. Um, and none of the parts really worked. Like the, so this is getting into the negatives. So, um, the characters were just so two dimensional. It wasn't even funny. And, uh, some of the kids stuff they said, like Lonnie, Lonnie is the child of the, the two main characters, like the mother and the father and the stuff they made Lonnie say, just a typical child wouldn't say, you're just like, F you, like the kid's not going to say that. And like, it's just, it's like I said, the characters are very wooden, two dimensional and it's really jarring from part one to part two to part three. Like part two, actually, I thought would have been more interesting if it came before part one, because part two is actually a, a lot like uh, like tabloid clippings or it's it's kind of like a newsreel almost where you're, you know, you're kind of dealing with at the stuff that happened in part after part one. But I think if part two came first, you would kind of hook you and then, you know, segue into that what happened actually in part one. So, yeah, this one was a big fail for me, guys. I it was, Sorry, Paul. I just it wasn't for me. Um Again, I respect the art of it. It just, it, it didn't hit me at all. So it's a quick read, but I didn't get much from it. So this one is actually an F tier, DNF or F that book, sorry. Okay, so moving along to the last book that I read. This was an audio book and it's Artificial Condition. It is the second book of the Murderbot series. 
again, it's such a fast read. Like I think I, I did the audiobook version. It was a three hour audiobook. I, I did it in a car ride. And I, it was even less than that because if I listened at 1.5 speed, so it was like two hours and something on minutes. So it's super fast. I actually liked it a lot more than the first one. You get a little bit more from Murderbot. She has a companion character that you meet in this book that I really liked and kind of, you know, fleshed her out more as a character, fleshed him out himself out a little bit more. Because Murderbot's kind of boring and a bit nihilistic when she's by herself. So when she's, I say it's a she, like she's, it is kind of androgynous it doesn't really have a sex uh and it's funny because it's it's kind of it is considered a female but then it's portrayed by a male voice actor so it toes that line the murder bot um yeah because when when it's by itself it's really boring and it just wants to sit there and watch sitcoms all day but when it's with in, interacting with other characters and humans it's really interesting she's kind of it i keep saying she but it's funny so yeah this one was really good for me much better than the first one I like the story. It kind of ties in from the first one to the second one. Murderbot's on a mission to kind of, you know, solve what kind of happened and, you know, put that, the Murderbot on that, uh, that path. I really dug it. I really like the story. It's probably like to rate it. I guess I got to say something negative again. The negative part really is when Murderbot's by herself, she's kind of boring. And, um, you know, she's just a Murderbot. <laughs> so, and, uh, yeah, so that's really it. So Murderbot, I'm gonna rate that one a C tier. Can safely buy on ebook. So, all right, guys. So that is all the reviews. So you know, five books, five reviews. I know the video is not gonna be ten minutes, but I try to get all the reviews done in ten minutes. Um, you know, please let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these books and what you thought. Um, tell me if you like them or if you you know like them more than I did or dislike them more than I did. So. Anyways guys, that's it for me and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.